So the pres what I want to do today is present a, you can almost think of it as a little um, tool that you can have in your pocket, but it's a lot more than that, that has two parts. The first part having to do with the pause. And here I draw on the, the work of uh, William Hernandez and Soti Grafanaki. Um, I love their concept of, an, of a natural pause. Um, it's not forced, it's not even, it's, it's in a sense, it's something that we just learn to access because it's there. Um, we learn to trust that it's there. The more we, the more we do it. And um, that's the first part. And that's that you might think of that as the coming in part, the part where we allow ourselves to have a space that's um, more than, or I don't know what the word is even apart from, but it's not, it's away from our habitual reactivity so that we come to a place of stillness uh, inside. That's the first part of it. And then the second part is, that actually, I want to just add to that, that, that William and Soti also created this phrase, listening through the pause, um, which I also like because it's not a technique. It's a way of, almost a way of being um, with ourselves and with others that is just human and present. Um, so it's, it's, it's in a sense, it's nothing artificial. It's, it's just us being with another person. But here in this exercise, we will be with, um, you might say a kind of person, but an inner person. Um, well, that's the first part, and the second part draws on the work of, uh, which I'm, I'm realizing that so few people know, because Lynn didn't know, and I don't think Melinda knew, a book uh, called Listening to Your Angel by Kevin Flanagan, uh, which came out not too long, I think, after Gene's book on focusing, uh, but which Gene praised very highly. He says it's one of the best personal descriptions of the focusing process I've ever read is what he was said. Mm -hmm. And um, there Kevin is trying to point to the fact that underneath our fears and our social conditioning, there is a, there's a, I'm gonna call it an inner voice or guide that is, he calls infallible in a sense, in terms of directing us to what would be right. Um, so what I'd like to do uh, as a group today is start with, uh, with the pause part and then have a pause where we discuss a little bit um, that part. And then we'll go on to the second part. And this first part, I'm gonna introduce a very simple exercise that, uh, that is essentially something that William does, is to ask a simple question. And um, you're all muted, so you can ask, answer it out loud. Um, even if you weren't muted, it wouldn't be a big deal. But I ask you to say out loud, when I ask this question, they say the answer out loud. And the question is, what is your name? So just sit, respond naturally and immediately. What is your name? And you can say it out loud. And now I'm gonna ask the same question. But I'm gonna ask you to wait 10 seconds before answering the question. 
So I'm going to ask, what's your name? You'll probably have said your name again by now. If not, just, just whenever you feel ready, reply, say your name. And I realize that as I do it this way, I kind of miss hearing the quality of people saying their name, because there almost always is a difference in how they say, how you say your name after 10 seconds than the way you say it when you just answer the question, what's my name? But you may have noticed a difference yourself in the quality of your voice or the yeah. And if people, I, at this point, I'd be happy to have people um, speak. I don't know how you want to call on people. Is Melinda or who, who or should I call on people? Um, yeah, if they raise their hands or if they could just speak naturally. Okay. Um, There's a place for uh, down in the react, oh, if you have the more recent one. Yeah. I think they can just speak. Just I, speak, I, just speak. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we sort of pause as before we speak anyway. <laughs> I had a completely different name, so I, yeah, a different name. You have you when you said your name the second time. Oh, it was completely it, different. Was there something yeah. else? Was the sound of it, different, or you literally we went from Leslie to Joanna? Juniper. Huh? Juniper. Juniper. You went to Juniper. <gasps> so you started with Leslie, and then, and after ten <laughs> seconds, it was Juniper. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it went from Jennifer Juniper to Juniper. You know that Donovan song. I don't know. It came to mind. Jennifer uh -huh. Juniper. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It felt different. Yeah. It's okay if you didn't notice the difference too. <laughs> well, for me, it was much softer the second time. You know, mm. the first time I said it, it was Steph. And then after 10 seconds, it was Steph. So it felt much different. Softer quality, it seems. I think I didn't understand. I mean, when you said name, to me, that could mean anything. I mean, I've been called many names. So, and I think Juniper is a more playful name. So it has a playful quality. However it came to you to answer the question. Yeah, yeah. sure. Well, the second time for me, it was much slower, as if you didn't hear me well. So I said, ma su -mi. So you can pronounce it. Every syllable, every single syllable. Ma, su, mi. Yes. So you, so be sure you get my name. And getting your name means something. There's something about the other person getting your name that feels important. That's right. And also, I was thinking of the Chinese characters. Each character means, has mm -hmm. meaning, mm -hmm. and Ma is filled with long life mm -hmm. and happiness. So I was thinking the meaning of my name while mm -hmm. I say it slowly. Oh, so it's not, it's, it's a meaningful Yes, not only to communicate with you or mm -hmm. with a person, but I, I was communicating with myself, why I was given that name. How rich. Mm -hmm. oh. It felt to me like after a pause, there was more significance in the name. Like, would 
is your name. And it had more um, resonance with my wanting to say it in a way that it would really represent me or something. Again, more you, more you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's exactly how I felt more me saying mm. my name at the same time. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The, the first time, uh, it's just a handle, a functional thing, like uh, this is this is the way you get my attention. Whereas the second time with the pause, it felt more like a real uh, communication with me. Lynn, your voice is very low for today. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Were you able to hear her? Because I was. Just it was low, but were you able to hear? No, okay. I think for me, it was more about where we get the information from. Hmm. Because I think the first time it's like, what's your name? And there's like an immediate, I know, a place where I know that. And then the invitation for pause, it's not that I that I don't remember my name, but it's like a most like coming from a bigger space or within a bigger space, and it has sort of a different, um, not necessarily a different meaning, but it's like a different experience in the body than just going to that one little place behind my eyes to get the information. Yeah. It's a different experience in the body. Yeah. Right. For me, it was the first time I said it, it felt like, okay, my name is June. That was, that's my name. The second time it felt inside like, well, my name is June. That's the name I was given, but who knows who I would be. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bigger question of what your name is what's your name <laughs> right not just what what sound was given to me to call myself who, who what what is my name <laughs> it's like almost like a zen koan right mm. We might take a couple more, two or three more. I felt this, this, the same thing that the first time asking name was just like a protocol, like this is my number, I'm box number this, if you know. And the second time you asked what box you are, mm -hmm. what are you, what is in the box? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you want to present yourself? How, how are you? what do you mean for yourself today what what does that mean it's a it's like content of the box whatever comes up is it depends on the moment but it wasn't just the box number mm. it's not longer just the box it's something more mm. i'm tempted to say something deeper but i don't know if the word deeper fits uh, i because there are so many variations in the box so mm -hmm. many in the yeah. box, like, yeah. and it depends on the moment of what right whether it's deeper or what it is yeah. in the in the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's what's here in this moment. Yeah, and that you're asking the name at the second time was more intentional. That you were really questioning me: what is in the box, or what? The second time asking is the pause makes it pregnant. Like, you know, what is it then? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking of the difference in Mandarin of asking ni hao, which is just sort of hello, yeah. and ni hao ma, 
yeah. which is where you really want to know how the person is. Yeah. <laughs> same same thing in Hindi also. You can uh -huh. ask the same thing and then ask with an emphasis of uh, feeling mm -hmm. part and it'll sound different. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. it, it's... Yeah. Mm. You give more eye contact, you give a warmer smile, you mm -hmm. express the care of concern, you know, that expression is there, then you're saying, it's not just the box, like, how are you really? Yeah. How, how are you? Yeah, how, yeah. How are you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe one more question, one more comment, rather. I don't want mine to be the last comment, but but I'm. It's okay. That, that has to be one more after mine. <laughs> well, okay, we'll make a space for one more if you like. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's call, poem "Call Me by My Many." Call Names. me my my true name or whatever, my wasn't it? Like yeah, something. Yeah, like right. That. That's right. That's right. That, that was in the background. I was no, that was echoing with something. Yeah, that's right. That poem, "Call Me by My True Name." Yeah. When, when, uh, when there's a pause, then all the richness of the implicit comes in and the word name has a different, uh, deeper, broader. That's right, that's right. It carries a, a, an implying of more, of more. yeah, right. Mm, that's beautiful. Let's take one more because Lynn doesn't want to be the last. <laughs> And it's okay to be the last one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think it's fine. Now everybody's thinking, oh no, I don't want to be the last one. <laughs> I'm setting something up here. <laughs> right, right. I can be the last with a misunderstanding. I misunderstood. I was asking, what's your name? Whoever is coming here, here with me now. So. I had the name of an angel I often call upon and and then another name. And you the second time I had another name. So yeah. The important thing is not so much the name, but what was what happened as a result of the pause. The second name was a new name. I haven't one, one that you had not used before. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. A, a gay name and a name from a certain region in France. Hmm. Um, hmm. La Bretagne from West. Yeah. Western France? Yeah. And Ireland? Yeah. The, the West, the part, uh, it's called La Bretagne. In Brittany, yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gaelic. Mm. <laughs> Do they speak Gaelic in Brittany? Are there, is there some Gaelic spoken in Brittany? There is some some mixture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's. There's no right way to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only the only thing is that I would like to have some, as much as possible, and not even everybody will have it. The experience of this this what pausing does because it's actually um, a very simple and natural thing to do uh, it's uh, and yet it can be very profound in how it uh, if, especially if we practice it right re fairly regularly it's transformative Okay, um, let's go to the second part. <clears throat> um, and this is the listening to your angel part. And I'd like to start with finding a situation 
where you're feeling a little maybe stuck, a little anxious, unsettled. Where you have some sort of a you want where you might actually welcome a friendly guide to help you. Doesn't need to be anything um, huge. It could be, but for this purposes here with the time that we have, probably would be best to have something not too big. And when you have that, notice how it feels in your body. Anything that feels tense or whatever feels a little agitated, wherever you might feel it. And then invite a pause. So that the pause allows you to go in and create a bit, find a, a bit, at least a bit of stillness, a bit of quiet inside. And invite what I'm calling, you could call it whatever you like, an inner guide or a sort of a something in you that kind of knows the right step here, that senses the right step. And we can call it our angel, but which is a nice name for it, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that it's a kind of knowing, I guess. This is what needs to happen here. This will move things in a right direction. If I can have her do this, then life will move in a better way. The situation will move in a better way. I will be able to be with the situation differently. And you don't wanna do this too quickly. <clears throat> because that could come just too automatically. <clears throat> you want to be able to have something fresh come, something <clears throat> a little bit surprising. Jane used to say, if you interpret a dream and you didn't know anything different after you interpreted the dream than you knew before. You weren't getting the message the dream had to give you. Well, it's the same thing here. If you're only getting what you already knew, then you're not really getting whatever might be here that's more. But don't force it just to just be still. And when you have it, <clears throat> allow yourself to feel it in the body, in your body. It might be a peaceful or full or flowing kind of thing, sensation. Maybe even joyful, possibly. And then 
you might imagine yourself back in that situation or to bring the situation back. And since how might I act differently now that I've listened to my age? What might I say? What might I do? Not as something you have to do, but as a possibility that was not quite there before. And when you've done that, we can bring this exercise to a conclusion. So this is the time when we have an open space for people to share whatever came. And I guess I look forward to hearing. I would like to share. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Well, first of all, it's really nice to be here. Hello, Melinda. It's been a long time. Hello, Lynn. Since the conference, I haven't seen you. Uh, like Mondays, I, I was telling Carlitos that Monday are so difficult for me. Like I, I walk. I I wake up with. Uh, this hesitant feeling of like I hate everything. I I don't want to be present. I Mondays are difficult, so I'm glad to be in a Monday with all of you. And, and knowing that there's always something more and something bigger than us that is holding our space and the track of our lives. Um, and, I, and I realized just by doing this exercise that what makes Mondays difficult for me, and this is new, is that it seems that in Mondays I feel a lot of pressure to make decisions or to do something or to be productive or or to be in a track or to be like with an agenda. And since I decided, since my father died of COVID four months ago, not to have an agenda, not to do anything. <laughs> so that makes my Mondays really difficult because I am not willing to have an agenda until I figure out where where or how to be and go. So, Carlito, thank you for inviting me this Monday because it opens something new and understanding why Mondays are so difficult for me. Very moved by your saying that. Thank you for being here. Then you're muted. Um, yeah. it, it brings to me uh, the difference between the agenda that comes from the realm of the explicit, um, the thinking realm, and then um, the, 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 the implicit realm where the angel is, where the still small voice is, something else arises that's different than the agenda, but it's, it, it, it's so deeply me, and yet it's, it's that larger that's holding me that you're talking about, Monica, that feeling of the way that the, the um, larger self is connected to this big realm that guides us. That was very inspiring to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I was able to feel it. I was able to to see this this difference. This yeah, to be more embodied or yeah the me here dealing with whatever I'm dealing and yeah. It makes me feel as even playful about it. You know, just by listening to you, it shifts. I feel even more playful because there's a lot of space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it brought playful, it, it, it brought a sense of, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Thank you for reflecting that. Yeah, and I'm planning to be with without agenda because I feel like there is a big soul calling me. Like I, I can feel it that I, that my the death of my father is a great opportunity for me to to be more connected with this bigger bigger space and to be living in a yeah in a more uh, unknown and this structured way a more unknown and unstructured way of mm -hmm. being something new yeah. Yeah, thank you. I feel happy. I even I was grumpy. I came in. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I'll, I'll say something, Charles. Ahead, I found the breakout rooms interesting. I learned from everybody. And uh, I, I use the metaphor of a corridor when thinking of the pause. So instead of running from room to room, I'm walking down a corridor first. Mm. And that leads me to another room. And that's mm. my way of pausing. Mm. And then somebody else in the group shared about feeling that the angel can be like a soft pillow under mm -hmm. our fear mm -hmm. so that we take not a defensive stand, but like a supportive stand mm -hmm. when we're dealing with our fears because we have this mm -hmm. comforting angel or this pillow or mm -hmm. something that we can tuck ourselves under. Fair enough. So that was yeah. interesting. Yeah, fair enough. The angel is a comforting, soft support. Yes. And your metaphor for the pause is a corridor that goes from one room to another. Like a passageway. A passageway. Uh -huh. That's another yeah. yeah. Oh, it yeah. takes so a passageway would take you from one place to another. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather than running from one room to the next without the uh -huh. passage. I see, I see. Rather than so running. Is is... Quarter, ten to Did somebody yeah. need to mute themselves? Yeah. Right. Okay, thanks. Yes, yeah, so. In my mind, running from yeah, one no, problem no, to the next. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a passageway, not a running, a running. It's a, it's a, a you're, you're going more slowly. Yeah, exactly. I, I like that definition. I would amend that for me by saying a passageway, but I don't know where exactly that passageway leads to. Mm. That's a good point. But that's a good, that's not a bad thing, right? No. Or is that, no, not a bad thing. It, it's a journey of exploration and hopefully growth, but in a, uh, Traditionally, when I think of a passageway, I know where I am and I know where I'm going. I'm using. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I but see. I'm amending it. I mm. like the definition. I'm simply amending it. A passageway to someplace unknown. Mm -hmm. Or as yet unknown? As yet unknown. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Being mindful as I'm walking down the passageway. Mm. So taking my time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Walking I'm... mindfully. Yeah. Steph? I really liked, I was in group with Shlomit when she shared that, and I really liked the visual. It opened something up for me. And I like, I spend so much time in my inner self that having visuals, I find really helpful. And when, when she shared that, it just opened something for me, gave permission for me to, to take that pause. It was like, it was like a visual of a pause. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, I, when she shared it, it was very powerful. The visuals can take us out of our sort of rational mind. It's sort of like dreams are visual. There's a way that we're, we operate on another level that's closer to the felt body sense with the visuals and it opens something yeah. like it did here, especially if it works. I mean, it, yeah, and it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Sophie here. I really appreciate how when we reflect on pause or we always the pause, there is more pausing. And uh, I really appreciate the pausing like this in a collective, um, the getting comfortable with the pause. Um, I also wanted to say, hi, Monica, so nice to hear your voice and see you. So glad you were here today. Um, Thank you. And um, it's interesting for me, the pause today um, was really led me to action. Very, it was a very clear, um, and the way the pause has been enacting or acting or the way I've been acting with the pause in my life the last year and a half has been more inaction and mm. stopping and mm. creating space and um, say no. And um, so today, I don't know, maybe because it was linked to a situation, or, mm -hmm. but the, and perhaps also to a guide. So a little bit of um, 
the comfort of something else. It was very clear. The message was very clear. I, I really got a very clear message and it gave me courage to go forward. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And there's a hummingbird that just came. <laughs> That's your angel. That hummingbird's your angel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charles, for bringing the pause again here to us. Really appreciate also the way you were um, facilitating this with lots of pausing and space. Really appreciate. Thank you. So nice that it's, it's led you to that step of an action, because that is an important part of what Kevin Flanagan says in his book, that, that, it, that the angel leads us to an action. We don't have to take the action. It's up to us. It's not compulsory. But the angel will suggest an action that we might take, and we can then decide, yes, this is right. We want to do this. And then he says it's important to follow through. Um, but we're not, it's not a compulsion. We don't have to do what the angel suggests. We are the ones who decide what we want to do. Yeah. It reminds me, I wanted to know more. If I don't know if you want to put it in the chat or somebody about the names you mentioned earlier, Williams. And... Oh, I'll give you the, 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 yeah, I'll give you the, I'll give you the references. Sure. Thank you. I'm I'll write them in the chat. Okay. I, I, did oh, I already put did put, yeah, uh, Melinda put that one. It's not, it's, it's on Amazon, but it's not in Kindle. And even the natural pause is, uh, they didn't put it in Kindle, but it's in uh, some e-form. E but you, could, you can go to their website. I think it's called the Pause Village, but this is, the, I'll give you the title. The Pause Village? Yeah, I think that's the, I think that's the website, okay. Pause Village. Um, and it's it's actually has a subtitle which is the uh, the natural pause a path to peace. Oh, nice. And it's full of examples of uh, William would do like just three hour workshops with people in the poorest parts of uh, Ecuador, and. Uh, they document all the ways that it helps people, the relationships between men and women, relationships between children and parents, how they uh, pause, they don't react, they don't react so angrily. The women find more self-respect uh, when they pause. It's, it's really interesting um, that the changes, a simple training in, in pausing. Jean, Jean loved the fact, and Mary, his wife, but this seemed like a, a, an easier way to teach focusing to people without going through so many complicated steps. Oh, and the, and the authors. Charles, I did give the website to everybody. Oh, great, thank you, there it is. Okay, beautiful, thank you. Just wondering um, how people feel about calling that uh, inner voice uh, an angel, you know, how that strikes you. Mm. you know, I think for some people it really will resonate, for other people it, it seems too out there. Religious or too religious or something. Right, or something. Um, and what name you, you have for that, for that? Mm. Um, that still small voice that speaks to you, that, um, that larger self, that, that knowing, mm. that deeper knowing. What do you call that to yourself when you're thinking about that? You know, that you're gonna take some quiet time to be in touch with yourself. What do you call that self? So it, it's so funny that you bring that up, Lynn, because I was struggling with the word angel and I was trying to think of, a, you know, my angel and it got me out of that state. And then I thought presence. I have, presence. Oh, I have an angel. 
their name is Presence. Ah. <laughs> I love that. Her name is Presence. And then I got really excited, and then it was like it all worked, you know. <laughs> yes, Presence. I think Angel is a convenient name. I mean, Angel is sort of, it, it didn't have like a spiritual feeling to it, although sometimes it does. I, at first I resisted, but then I thought it's convenient. <laughs> it's just, it's easy. I could call it salami. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, but um, and in our group, we had really a fun time because we were trying to figure out how to put our angel to use. And we were all talking about organizing our stuff and, and you know, feeling resistant to taking care of organizing and things like that. So our group decided that we were going to have advertised on Indeed um, for an angel that had OCD. So that, <laughs> so, that, so that the angel could just come and help us organize. <laughs> <laughs> we were having we really had a really fun time with it um yeah so it it, it was convenient i mean i i think angel a is a very practical right practical, practical voice yeah it's useful it's logical i mean it, you can angel can be put in any it's neutral it, it can be neutral i mean i i know some people would associate it you know religiously but i i found it actually kind of neutral. I like the book. I've, I've been reading the book also. Ah, so that's it's uh, it really, um, you can put it to good use. It's, mm. it's convenient mm. for me. What it sounds like to me is that Angel wouldn't be your name. It's not something, you know, no. how a felt sense name touches the place, but it's fine. Yeah. It, 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 it's like the, you, like your own name before the pause when Charles asked at the beginning. Uh, it's functional. It is. Someone else, you know, makes it a functional, usable, tangible, uh, identifiable uh, presence or sound or a, a, a presence. It, it as long works. as we're playful, right? As long as we're playful. Yeah. Yeah. We, have it, we really were having a good time. Right. I think for me, I would call it my my inner wisdom, mm. uh, or the, or a still small voice, mm. something. But it it would be interesting for us to all focus on that together. We don't have time today, but to focus on what would be our own personal name for such a deeply personal thing, and yet a universal thing. It's the thing that's so completely me and so completely universal. Yeah, a conscience could be right, I suppose. It's just many different names, right? I think to me, the, per, the personal name for Angel would be a good mama. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. an, inner, an inner mom. My, my good inner mother. Well, I think it's time for us to, to stop. And uh, mm. Charles, I want to thank you so much. Thank everybody for your participation. It was really Charles, it was, yeah, it was very, thank it was rich. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good thank week, you. everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.